So world-class entrepreneurs are never lucky. Never. You make your own luck. It's a big idea. Um, you know, at a single point in time, you'll say, yeah, I just happened to be there when X happened, or gee, that just kind of happened, to, and I was just there when somebody said X or Y over a career. You will now look back and go, you were not lucky. You showed up more than other people. You took advantage of more other people. You raised your hand more often. You were there more often. You got on a plane where everybody else went, ah, it's too much of a hassle. World-class entrepreneurs do that over time consistently. And you could tell the difference of whether you're going to make it or not is when everybody else says, nah, too much work, or, oh, you mean i got to, like, drive over there, or you mean you have to talk to them? No, it's just too much of a, or, nah, that's just too hard. I want you to remember that. That adds up over time in a career. And you will start making your own luck, and you will find that stuff will start coming your way. Does this make sense? Right? Yes, this conference happened to happen, but you guys decided to go to it. Somebody like gave you a little hint that perhaps you needed to do that. But, <laughs> but, but my point is, don't, right, don't ever think luck happens to other people. And I want you guys to understand the distinction between standing there waiting for direction versus making your own direction by making it happen. So just as an aside, keep going, guys. This is good. Well, we, we thought these guys would know this big problem, so it existed. <laughs> it's a big it's a big shift, right? Where you know you think they're just going to grab it out of your hands, and now you realize, gee, there's a portion of evangelism here. And just remember, if you're right, a new market turns into an existing market fairly rapidly, yeah. right? Yeah. But but at least on day one, when you're ahead of the game, the things you need to do about evangelism, about you know scale, about whether you're selling or evangelizing, is really kind of different. Yeah. Teaching team, other comments or yeah, so questions? Quickly add to that, that you know, getting the people you're talking to as your customers to be talking about this problem itself is part of your journey now, yeah. as C's point. <coughs> getting that message out there and making your company solution part of the conversation at all the conferences six months and a year from now um, is a, a critical thing to do. If yeah. you do it, you're of course well pleased to take advantage yeah. of it. That, but, so the, the point is, is that a lot of the reason I'm pushing on these points that we're talking about these things is a, a lot of the pivots are off understanding the complexity of that chart. More of the pivots are off. There's some complexity. The market's not penetrable. Uh, you know, understand the ecosystem. There's no insertion point for a new technology or a new company. Those are probably more of the reasons for the pivots than you know, around the core technology. So the sooner you understand that ecosystem, the sooner you'll have a sense of where you want to stay with it. And again, just you now focusing back on you guys, you know, you may look at the fuel cell market structure and go, it's just not penetrable for new entry, even though the technology is applicable. Right. So what are you going to do for tomorrow? Uh, for tomorrow, we're going to go try and visit uh, the, 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 the planning board for Red, Redwood City um, and see what they're, what they're thinking about because they, they're working on this possible proposed desalination plan, try and talk with them about how they're thinking about that project. And some of you are probably wishing that now, but I'm, I, I have to tell you how proud I am of each and every one of you here, because you're going to look back in what you did here, most of you, and go, holy cow, didn't we actually do that in a class while we were taking a course load and work and everything else? And, and so for me, it's just a really impressive effort on all your parts. Any other comments? On yeah. <clears throat> I, I'm guessing for some of you, this was the hardest class you might have taken, um, and that's the intent. Because as hard as this class might have been, it's so much easier than when you get out and do it for real. So the laboratory was a, a sort of a safe place to stretch your muscles and see if this fits. And for a lot of you, I think it does. And uh, I'm thrilled to have been a part of it. I think you guys are doing a great job. Yeah. Thank you guys. Congratulations. And uh, best of luck to all you on Monday. Yeah. Next Monday, you started for yourself for real. Yeah. Yeah. So, so final comment uh, I would just share is that by design, this class is not taught, right? It's experienced. We set up a framework under Steve's leadership that gets you out of the classroom, and then we all sort of monitor each other.